Hello and welcome to our channel. In this video, we will discuss about COPD, that is chronic obstructive pulmonary disease. The topics which we will cover in this video are what is COPD, what causes COPD, and what are the signs and symptoms of COPD, that is, what are the clinical features. Then we will talk about what are the stages of chronic of talk about a very important part that is the management part and we will also discuss about the diet recommendations for people with COPD, some exercises, some breathing exercises for COPD patients. So these are the main topics which we will cover in this video. So let's start about today's video that is COPD everything you need to know about chronic obstructive pulmonary disease so first of all we'll talk about what is COPD what is chronic obstructive pulmonary disease chronic obstructive pulmonary disease commonly referred to as COPD as it is a group of progressive lung diseases and the, so this is the basic exact meaning of COPD now we'll talk about what is emphysema so emphysema slowly destroys air sacs in your lungs which interferes with the outward airflow and bronchitis, chronic bronchitis causes inflammation and narrowing of the bronchial tubes which allows mucus to build up. And the top cause of the COPD is tobacco smoking. Long term exposure to chemical irritant is also a one another cause which can lead to COPD and it's a disease that usually takes a long time to develop. So this was all about the exact meaning of COPD. So basically COPD is a mixture of two progressive diseases that is emphysema and chronic bronchitis. Now we'll talk about what are the causes of COPD. Here, so we'll talk about so most people with COPD are at least 40 years old and have at least some history of smoking. The longer and more tobacco products you smoke, the greater you have risk of chronic obstructive pulmonary disease. In addition to cigarette smoking, cigar smoking, pipe smoking and secondhand smoke can cause COPD. And the risk of COPD is even greater if you have asthma and smoke. You can also develop COPD if you are exposed to chemicals and fumes in the workplace. And long-term exposure to air pollution and inhaling dusts can also cause COPD. In developing countries, along with tobacco smoke, homes are often poorly ventilated, forcing families to breathe fumes from burning fuel used for cooking and heating. There may be genetic predisposition to develop COPD. Up to an estimated 5% of trusted sources of people with COPD have a deficiency in a protein called alpha-1 antitrypsin. This deficiency causes the lungs to deteriorate and also can affect the liver. There may also be other associated genetic factors at play as well. So this is the basic etiology that leads to COPD. Now next we'll talk about what are the clinical features of COPD that what are the signs and symptoms which you can notice if you have COPD. So let's talk about those symptoms. So COPD make it harder to breathe. Symptoms may be mild at first, beginning with intermittent coughing and shortness of breath. As it progresses, symptoms can become more constant to where it can become increasingly difficult to breathe. 
you may experience buzzing and tightness in the chest or have excess sputum production. Some people with COPD have flare-up of severe symptoms. At first, the symptoms of the COPD can be quite mild and you might mistake them for a cold. And the early symptoms include, first, occasional shortness of breath, especially after exercise. Second, mild but recurrent cough. Third, leading to clear your throat often, especially first thing in the morning. You might start making subtle, subtle changes such as avoiding stairs and skipping physical activities. Symptoms can get progressively worse and harder to shortness of breath. After even mild exercises such as walking up a flight of stairs. Second, wheezing, which is a type of higher pitched noisy breathing, especially during exhalations. The third one is chest tightness. And the next is chronic cough with or without mucus. Next, need to clear mucus from your lungs every day. Frequent colds, flu and other type of infections. And there will be emaciation, that is lack of energy. There will be highly weakness in the body. And in later stages of COPD, symptoms may also include fatigue, swelling of the feet, ankles and legs. And weight loss also. Immediate medical care is needed if you have bluish or grey fingernails or lips as these indicate low oxygen level in your blood. Second, if you have trouble catching your breath or cannot poke. Third, if you feel confused, muddled or faint. And the last is if your heart is racing. So these are the main signs and symptoms of chronic obstructive pulmonary disease, of chronic bronchitis and emphysema. Now next, now next we'll talk about what are the stages of COPD. One measure of COPD is achieved by spirometry grading and there are different grading systems and one grading system is a part of goal classification. As you can see here on the screen, this is a gold classification based on spirometry grading. And the gold classification is used for determining COPD severity and helping to form a prognosis and treatment plan. There are four gold grades based on spirometry testing. Grade 1, mild. Grade 2, moderate. Grade 3, severe. And the grade 4 is very severe. So these are the stages of COPD. Now next we'll talk about the investigations. And or you can say diagnostic criteria. That how you will diagnose COPD. If you are suffering from COPD. So what are the tests that you have to perform? So let's talk about investigations. So diagnosis is based on symptoms of physical examination and diagnostic test results. When you visit the doctor, be sure to mention all your symptoms. Tell your doctor if you are a smoker or have smoked in the past. And if you are exposed to lung irritants on the job, if you are exposed to a lot of secondhand smoke, if you have a family history of chronic obstructive pulmonary diseases and if you have asthma or other respiratory conditions and if you take over the counter or prescription medication. So during the physical examination your doctor will use a stethoscope to listen to your lungs as you breathe and based on all this information your doctor may order some of these tests to get a more complete picture. Now let's talk about those tests. So first one is spirometry. Spirometry is a non-invasive test to, act, to assess lung, in, lung functions. During the test, you will take a deep breath and then blow into a tube connected to the spirometer. Second, 
X-ray and CT scan or simply you can say imaging test. So imaging test include a chest X-ray and CT scans. These images can provide a detailed look at your lungs, blood vessels and the heart. An arterial blood gas test involves taking a blood sample from an artery to measure your blood oxygen, carbon dioxide and other important level. Another test is CBC that is complete blood count. So these tests can help determine if you have COPD or a different condition such as asthma, a restrictive lung disease or heart failure. So this was all about the investigations. So if you have any kind of symptom, go for these tests. Now next we'll talk about the very important part that is management. If you have COPD or you are suffering from COPD, then how will you manage COPD? What is a diet that should be recommended to you? What you will eat and what you will not eat? And what are the things that you will do and what are the things that you will not do? So let's talk about the very important part that is management. So First of all, we'll talk about diet recommendations for people who are suffering with COPD. So, as we all know that there is no specific diet for COPD, but a healthy diet is very important for maintaining overall health. The stronger you are, the more able you will be to prevent complications and other health problems. So, choose a variety of nutritious fruit foods from these groups vegetables fruits grains proteins and dairy products drink plenty of fluids drinking at least six to eight ounce glasses of non-caffeinated liquids a day can help keep mucus thinner this may make the mucus easier to cough out you have to limit caffeinated beverages because they can interfere with medications. If you have heart problems, so you may need to drink less. So talk to your doctor. Go easy on the salts. It causes the body to retain water which can strain breathing. Maintaining a healthy weight is very important. It takes more energy to breathe when you have COPD. So you might need to take in more calories but if you are overweight your lungs and your heart may have to work harder so if you are underweight or frail even basic body maintenance can become difficult overall having copd becomes your immune system and decreases your ability to fight off infections a full stomach make it harder for your lungs to expand leaving you short of breath it happens these so try these remedies first of all clear your air base about an hour before a meal second take smaller bites of food that you can chew slowly before swallowing third swap three meals a day for five or six smaller meals and last one is save fluids until the end so you feel less full during the meals so this was all about the diet recommended plan i hope you guys will try this one now next also another very important management here we will talk about some breathing exercises for the patients who are suffering from copd so basically here we'll talk about five breathing exercises that will help you for better repairment. So let's talk about the breathing exercises. So when you practice regularly, breathing exercise can help you exert yourself less during daily activities. They can also potentially aid in your return to exercising, which can lead to you feeling more energetic overall. 
Read on and learn about these five exercises that can be especially useful for people who are suffering from COPD. So these breathing exercises are number one, first lip breathing, second coordinated breathing, third deep breathing, fourth half cough and the last one is diaphragmatic breathing. Now one by one we'll talk about them that what are their advantages and how to perform them. So first of all, We'll talk about the first breathing exercise for the patient who are suffering from COPD. So let's talk about the first one that is pursed lip. As you can see here on the screen, we have also provided a picture so that it become easier for you to understand it, how to perform this breathing exercise. So let's talk about it. So according to Cleveland Clinic, First lip breathing has a range of benefits. It's been shown to reduce how hard you have to work to breathe. It helps release air trapped in your lungs. It promotes relaxation and it reduces shortness of the breath. Practicing this technique four to five times daily can help. Here is how to practice first lip breathing. So let's talk about it. So how to perform this technique. So while keeping your mouth closed, take a deep breath in through your nose, counting to two. Follow this pattern by repeating in your head, inhale, one, two. The breath doesn't have to be deep. A typical inhale will do. Now put your lips together as if you are starting to whistle or blow out candles on your birthday cake. And this is known as pursing your lips. While counting to keep your lips pursed, slowly breathe out by counting to four. Don't try to force the air out, but instead breathe out slowly through your mouth. So this was all about the first breathing exercise. And this First lip breathing is best for performing strenuous activities such as climbing stairs. Now the second breathing exercise for the patients who are suffering from COPD is coordinating breathing. You can see here the picture on the screen we have provided for you guys for better understanding. Now let's talk about it. So filling short nose of breath can cause anxiety that makes you hold your breath. To prevent this from occurring, you can practice coordinating breathing using these two steps. Now let's talk about how to perform this exercise. So, inhale through your nose before beginning an exercise. While pursing your lips, breathe out through your mouth during the most strenuous part of the exercise. An example could be when curling upward on a bicep curl. This coordinated breathing can be performed when you are exercising or feeling anxious. Now the third one that is deep breathing. As you can see here on the screen we have provided a picture for better understanding. Now let's talk about the process how to perform this technique and how helpful it is for you. So deep breathing prevents air from getting trapped in your lungs, which can cause you to feel short of breath. As a result, you can breathe in more fresh air. Here is how to practice deep breathing. Sit or stand with your elbows, your elbows slightly back. This allows your chest to expand more fully. Inhale deeply through your nose. Hold your breath as you count to 1, 2, 3, 4 and 5. Release the air via slow, deep exhale through your nose until you feel your inhaled air has been released. So this is a technique to perform how to do this. And deep breathing it is best to do this exercise with other daily breathing exercises that can be performed for 10 minutes at a time so practice it for three or four times per day now the next that is a fourth one breathing exercise that is half cough 
As you can see here on the screen, we have provided a picture for better understanding. Now let's talk about the technique. So when you have COPD, mucus can build up more easily in your lungs. And the half cough is breathing exercise which is designed to help you cough up mucus effectively without making you feel too tired. So here is how to practice the half cough exercise. So place yourself in a comfortable seated position. Inhale through your mouth slightly deeper than you would when talking when taking a normal breath. Activate your stomach muscles to blow the air out in three even breaths. While making the sounds ha ha ha. Imagine you are blowing onto mirror to cause it to steam. Half cough should be less tiring than a traditional cough and it can keep you from feeling worn out when coughing up mucus. Now our last breathing exercise that is diaphragmatic breathing. As you can see here on the screen we have provided a picture for better understanding. Now let's talk about the technique how you can perform this. So diaphragm is also very important muscle which is involved in the work of breathing. People with COPD tend to rely more on the accessory muscles of the neck, shoulders and back to breathe rather than on the diaphragm. So diaphragmatic or abdominal breathing helps to retain this muscle to work more effectively. So here is how to perform this technique. So let's talk about it. While sitting or lying down with your shoulders relaxed, put a hand on your chest and place other hand on your stomach. Take a breath in through your nose for two seconds, feeling your stomach move up outward. You are doing the activity correctly if your stomach moves more than your chest. Purse your lips and breathe out slowly through your mouth, pressing lightly on your stomach. This will enhance your diaphragm's ability to release air. Repeat the exercise as you are able to do. So this was all about the last exercise. So here we have discussed about the management part. We have discussed about the diet for COPD patients and what are the breathing exercises which they can perform. So in this video, we have discussed about chronic obstructive pulmonary disease, which is a combination of a emphysema and chronic bronchitis. We have also discussed about the signs and symptoms, that is the clinical features, what are the causes, what is the basic etiology, and what are the grading, what are the stages of COPD, how to manage if you are suffering from COPD. We have also discussed about the investigations that what are the tests which you can perform if you have COPD. And yes, we have also discussed about some breathing exercise which can help you for better recovery. So that's all. That's all for today. See you guys in our next video with how you can manage chronic obstructive pulmonary disease by using homeopathic medicines. So in the next video, we will discuss about what are the top five homeopathic medicines for COPD, that is treatment. Till then, stay connected with us for more videos like this. Don't forget to subscribe and comment below. And yes, press the bell icon for more updates. Stay safe, stay healthy and perform exercises, meditation, pranayams, yogas daily because they are good for your health. And yes, thanks for watching our video.